Hey guys, Paul here. So I've been playing a lot of Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel for the last couple of years since it released. In fact, I would go so far as to say it's probably replaced the physical paper TCG as the primary way that I engage with Yu-Gi-Oh! I play it all the time, and I don't really get to play as much with physical cards. Of course, that's been my traditional background in Yu-Gi-Oh! So uh, it's caused me to change my thinking about a lot of different things with the game. And today in particular, I wanted to talk about the best of one format um, as opposed to the best of three format and why I actually think that there could be an interesting argument for playing the TCG as a best of one. Now wait, before you thumbs down the video or click away or leave some hateful comments saying I'm just master dual pilled, which is like somewhat kind of true, hear me out because I'm not saying that it's actually like perfect and the solution to everything and it actually might even be worse, but I just wanted to hear what people thought about this sort of idea. So, uh, of course, in the Yu-Gi-Oh! TCG, we play best two out of three with side decking. Whereas in Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel, you don't have a side deck and you just play best of one formats, right? You hop on the ladder, you play against someone, it's a best of one. Whoever wins or loses or whatever, that's it. It's done and then you just queue again and face someone else. And I sometimes have started to think that that might actually be a more enjoyable way to play Yu-Gi-Oh! Sort of. So, um... What are some of the benefits of a best of three versus a best of one? I think the biggest one is that it slightly reduces the uh, sort of element of luck in the game. Because if you lose the dice roll in Yu-Gi-Oh, that can oftentimes put you at a severe disadvantage. We know that going first is extremely powerful in this game, and going second is a little bit harder. You're going to have to rely on hand traps, you're going to have to rely on maybe some board breakers to be able to play, but there's no guarantee that you'll like hard draw into those. And going first usually means that you get to play like completely unimpeded by your opponent. That has been changing a little bit recently because more and more decks do have the ability to sort of start playing in the opponent's turn. We've seen more cards like that. But generally speaking, there is a huge luck component, and in a best of three, it means that you're not, you know, sort of staking your entire, like the results of the entire match on whether or not you win the dice roll. You get to play a game two and potentially a game three where you might be able to, you know, draw a better hand and also, you know, get to go first if you lost the first round. And there's also the side deck, which is obviously a really, really big thing. So after seeing what strategy your opponent plays, you can side deck in counterplay against them. They play lots of traps, you side in spell and trap removal. They play high combo, you side in more of your debilitating hand traps or perhaps board breakers if you know that you're going to have to go second in like a game three setting. And so I think that this, in tandem with the fact that you're just getting general knowledge about, you know, what deck they're playing, how they're playing it, you can sort of adapt on the fly, makes best of three feel like a probably more like fair way to play, right? It does a better job, I would say, of gauging, you know, who came prepared um, best for like the field or, well, there's sort of a counter argument to that, but like we'll say that it does a good job of um, you know, who, who prepared the most, who has the best side deck, who has the most, like, adaptability, that sort of thing. But, um, I think that best of one can actually sort of tick those boxes, too. While it does not, uh, get rid of the whole, like, luck factor, right? Someone's gonna have to win the coin flip or the dice roll or whatever and go first, and that doesn't really change. There is, uh, an element of preparedness and adaptability that sort of applies to best of one formats as well. When you're deck building in Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel, things change a lot because since there is no side deck, there is no game two or three, you have to include a little bit of everything in your deck, a little bit of an answer to everything. So normally in the TCG, you don't really like main deck spell and trap removal very much. At most, you might see people main decking Harpy's Feather Duster or something, but generally that's kind of the extent of it, if you even get that. Usually you're going to side in a lot of those sorts of removal cards in game two and three when, you're, when you know that you're facing a deck that's like susceptible to them. But in Master Duel, you pretty much have to include something like Feather Duster and even maybe other spell and trap removal because there's just, like, no way to know what your opponent's going to play and you need to have some sort of an answer in your main deck for it because nothing is worse than getting locked down by, like, Floodgates or just generally, like, kind of trap cards, back row decks and having nothing in your main deck that can out them. Outing the skill drain or outing that there can be only one or whatever, right? In addition to, you know, the need to just have board breakers, like a Dark Ruler No More's Forbidden Droplets, Lightning Storm, you know, Raigeki. These are cards that, again, in the TCG, you don't really want to see if you're playing like a combo deck and going first. Those cards aren't combo cards, so you'd really rather side them in for when you have to go second. But in Master Duel, once again, you've got to include some amount of those cards. And then there's also kind of the uh, accessories to the crime. Like, that's where I think of, like, Triple Tactics, Talents, and Thrust, where it's these cards that kind of work well going first and going second. 
and can just sort of change the way that they play in either case. You know, Triple Tactics Thrust can get you to the vital spell and trap you need to, like, destroy your opponent's field. I oftentimes use it to, like, you know, get Raigeki or Harpy's Feather Duster in a troublesome matchup. And, of course, we all know about Triple Tactics Talent and how strong that is. There's even more of a need to main deck things like Kaijus and Lava Golems. Because, again, you never know if you're going to face, you know, uh, X Pirelli Noir or some other, you know, untargetable, just uninteractable boss monster, and you need to have a way to deal with it that the TCG would let you just side deck for, but in Master Duel, you have to have that stuff, you know, brought in to begin with. So, with all that out of the way, though, uh, there are downsides to a best of one still. There's probably the biggest one being, like, you have to dilute your deck with these cards, which means that your deck kind of loses an element of uh, consistency and, like, efficiency, right? Like I said, and the TCG combo decks want to see combos. They want to see playable cards on the first turn so that they can play and extend. And uh, they want to see them as often as possible and as fast and, like, soon as possible. And so if you have to run Kaijus and you have to, you know, main deck Dark Ruler No More and all of these other, you know, Forbidden Droplets or whatever else... Yeah, that, that's not really something that you want to do, but um, it sort of helps to, I think, level the playing field somewhat in a best of one setting because everyone's kind of got to run them. So maybe that's good, but also like maybe it's bad because then I think, well, if everyone's got to run these cards and dilute their decks, then there are also going to be more games where people just kind of brick. And bricking's no fun. Bricking can be okay if your opponent also bricks and then you're kind of just both like swinging and hoping that something kind of pans out so in that way you know maybe there's some element of fun to it but i think that nobody really likes bricking especially if that game is being like predicated all on a best of one still though uh i think in a maybe lore like sense if we're kind of talking about how the anime and things like that worked you always played best of one in like you know the Yu Gi Oh tv show now i know i know what you're gonna say okay what the fuck does the anime have to do with it it doesn't really matter we're playing the tcg so who actually cares and, like, you're right, but still, there are other trading card games that actually use best of one formats, and they seem to be perfectly fine. I know uh, Dragon Ball Super is best of one. If I'm correct, I think Cardfight Vanguard is as well. And so these are games where, even if you're at, like, a regional or some other large-scale tournament, you are still staking, you know, the results, the outcome of an entire round on just the single best of one. Granted, these games are not, you know, one-to-one -one with Yu-Gi-Oh!, these are games where they typically do, at least from my kind of limited knowledge of them, they seem to be a lot grindier. Uh, games go a lot longer. They're much more about, like, you know, resource management and kind of slow rolling your way to victory. Yu-Gi-Oh! is not that kind of game. Yu-Gi-Oh! is a type of game where you can lose in the very first turn, potentially. And, you know, decks will have really long combos and kind of just try to, like, shut the game out right then and there on their first turn. So I don't know that uh, having a best of one would feel very fulfilling in a tournament sense because you could feel like you just got sacked. Again, that gets back to that dice roll thing. However, um, I think that the element of preparation that it takes with deck, deck building and maybe even deciding to go up to 42 cards or 44 cards in your main deck in order to fit those extra hand traps or kaijus or board breakers or whatever, there's something to be said about that. And so... The main question I was thinking is, what would the TCG look like, maybe even just the current TCG, if it was played in a best-of-one format? Would that be a good or a bad thing? I think that it would be too much to ask for this to just suddenly like be how it's played at YCS events and regionals, and it's just like, okay, tomorrow we're just going to start doing best-of-one. I think everything would change. A lot of card choices and like mentalities and stuff would change. That would be kind of cool to see, but I think that it would probably be a bit of like too much whiplash for people. However, I feel like there could be something interesting in, like, maybe trying it out as a public, like, side event at um, YCS events, or even, like, as a thing at locals. It would certainly cut down on time issues, at least that's assuming that we get the same amount of time per round, um, but, like, yeah, that's one thing, or maybe even the round timer could go down and regionals could end faster, that's, like, maybe a small logistic benefit. Um, I don't know. It's just something that I've kind of had on my mind. I know other games managed to do it, and I know that actually even in the Yu-Gi-Oh! OCG, it's much more common that games are played in a best-of-one format as opposed to a best-of-three format. So, you know, there is that. Um, I think there's one final element, elephant in the room here that needs to be talked about, and that's probably the existence of Max C. Uh, so I think that Max C in Master Duel, I've given my thoughts on this card before, and that I think that it is annoying, but like not actually my least favorite part about playing Master Duel. However, I think if the TCG did have a best of one format, the absence of Max C would probably make it at least a little bit more enjoyable. Max C is a little too polarizing, I feel, 
for you know a best of one game. I think that in a best of three, it's still obviously very annoying. And I'm not like saying, okay, bring back Maxi. That's not what I mean. But it's just that like in a best of one, it can swing games so fast and it kind of turns into that whole Master Duel mini game with like Maxi and Ash and Called By and Cross Out and all that stuff. So I do think that like in a best of one format, a card like Maxi probably doesn't need to be around. Um, but yeah, that's basically my sort of comparison of best of one and best of three. And the more I've played Master Duel lately, the more I've been like, you know, it'd be interesting to see the TCG be played in a best of one. I think that it would change a lot. I think that there would probably be a lot of backlash and resilience to it at first, but maybe just maybe there's something there. So let me know what you guys think about that down in the comments. How do you feel about a best of one format? Do you think that it's something that could ever be viable, even maybe just as a fun, neat side format? I know we're always talking about like, whoa, what's like a different way that I could kind of play Yu-Gi-Oh, like a legacy format or a speed duel format or a lower power format or whatever. Would best of one be something that could be in that conversation? Or do you think that just honestly the volatility of it is a little too much and just wouldn't really be satisfying at all? Um, it was maybe Yu-Gi-Oh! You know, just not the kind of game where that needs to be a thing. So, uh, yeah, I'd love to hear your thoughts down in the comments. Uh, make sure you subscribe to APS Amplifier. Be sure you have, because it's important. I really, really, really would like to get 100,000 subscribers on this channel so I can get another silver play button. I'm selfish, I know. Anyways, okay, that's going to be it. I'll be reading all your comments and responding. See you in the next one. Fast turn.